In this video, we will discuss how to deal with outliers in your research. First of all, what are they and how do we locate them in Excel? First of all, what is an outlier? The technical definition is that outliers are defined as numeric values in any random data set that have an unusually high deviation from either the statistical mean or the median mean, the median value in statistics. So to locate them is one thing, but what you do with them is another issue that I will not discuss too much in this video because that is a decision completely up to you. The first possibility is that the, the outlying value is interesting. You may have discovered a polymorphism in a gene, a new clinical syndrome or whatever. Another possibility is that the value is a mistake, a reading error or a faulty data entry. I would say measure again or discard that value. A third possibility is that the distribution that it's based on is not normal, with perhaps a log normal distribution with a heavy tail or any other type of distribution. You have to deal with that problem. We will not do that in this video. And the value may just simply be the tail of a normal distribution. If you take a 5% error chance and 95% confidence, then you will mistakenly identify an outlier in 5% of the samples you test. Again, I will not discuss which option to choose. That is up to you. You know your research field the best. I'm just going to discuss three different met methods of locating an outlier. The first one, I don't think it's the best one, is based on z-values. The other one is based on what is called the median absolute deviation value, MAD, MAD. And then Tukey, the stat st statistician, has introduced an interquartal range method, IQR. I think that's the best one. Let's test them in Excel. I have here in column B a series of randomly distributed values, as you could find them in your research. Actually 25 of them, so my sample is, is a good size. I plotted all these values right here. I also put a line here for the mean and for the median. I base them on the mean calculations here and the mean calculations there. In general, the mean is more sensitive to outliers than the median. So how did I get these numbers? I used the norm inverse function, which can create random numbers if you base them on the function rand, and I made sure that the mean is around 30. Okay. And the standard deviation 15. And I multiplied that number with one minus two times a random number between zero and one again. So each time I use Shift F9 that recalculates this sheet and it will give me different outcomes. This is really what happens each time you take a sample from a population. Your results may vary and you never know what you got. If there are outliers there, they could have many explanations. So for instance, this one here on top is probably an outlier. We will find out whether it is or not. But e even if it is, it could be very acceptable. It could be in the tail of a normal distribution. Let's start the three methods that we discussed. The first one is rather simple. It's based on z-values. You can really use z-values only if you have more than 30 cases. We don't. We have only 25, so it's a little bit dubious whether we should use the z-value. I'm just showing you how you calculate it. And we take on a confidence level of 95% or a 5% error chance, and we find out what the outliers are. 
don't use the c-value itself, but rather its probability. So we need a dist function in Excel. So z can never get larger than n minus 1 divided by the square root of n. Let's try that method. I calculated the mean and the standard deviation here, and then I calculated the maximum z value. That is the count of all the cases we have, in this case 25, minus 1 divided by the square root of the number of cases we have. Based on that z value, we are going to create a verdict. In cell E5 we say if the norms dist function, based on the absolute difference between B5 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation in E2, and we make it a non-cumulative distribution. If that is less than 0.05, then we can call that an outlier, otherwise we call it nothing. In this case, we did not find any outlier situations. But if I would press Shift F9, I could hit on two, like now. Outlier, outlier, I found them here. According to this method, these two are outliers. That one apparently is not, and this one is not. This method will help you to locate them. In this case, I would say it's very obvious that that is an outlier. Still, it could be at the tail of the normal distribution. Let's go for the second method. The second method is more robust. It calculates the median absolute deviation, and if a number in a data set exceeds 3.5 times MAD, it's considered an outlier. Let's apply that method here. I did that in column H. The median is this, the MAD is calculated as the median based on the absolute difference between the median of all these values minus the individual values, and we calculate the median on that one. As you notice, the formula needs in the background an intermediate array. So we have to um, accept this as an array function. That's why the braces are there. Don't type those braces. You get them by using Control shift enter If I go to this cell, and I go to the formula bar, let's say I had typed that formula and I did my regular enter, I get value issues, because I forgot to make this an array function. Control shift enter And it came up with this mad value, and in this column H we are going to make a verdict if the absolute difference between the value we are talking about and the median of these numbers is greater than 3.5 times the mad value, then we consider it an outlier, otherwise we do not. In this case, we had no outliers. Again, we had no outliers, but the method in column E found an outlier in case 19. In this case, they both had the same verdict. That must be an outlier. I marked only the one of the second method and not the one of the first method. In this case, they both agree again. Sometimes they do not agree. The first method found an outlier, the second did not. In this case, the second method had one more verdict. I notice that this method is very easy going in its outliers. So maybe we need a better one. I would say that John Tookie's method is probably the best one. He gave it a very formal definition. If it's smaller than the first quartile of the values minus 1.5 the IQR or larger than the third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. IQR is the interquartile range it's the width of the interval that contains the middle half of the data. Let's use that method in column K. 
I happen to have one verdict here, outlier, and the other two are easier in assigning outliers. Again, how did we do it? In K1, we used a quartile function. The first quartile, you could also have used a per percentile function, up to 25%. The second one, the same story, the fourth quartile, or the percentile on the 75th percent. IQR is the average of all the cases, plus 1.5 times 25th percentile and the 75th percentile difference. Based on that IQR we calculate in K5 if we should speak of an outlier or not. If it's the value in that row is greater than or less than the 25th percentile plus 1.5 times IQR or minus 1.5 times IQR. Then we speak of an outlier. And in this case we got one outlier. Again, if we keep doing that shift F9, we will see that in this case column K has no outliers, though the other two say that this situation is an outlier. I, I usually find Tukey's method a, a little safer. It's very critical. It says, uh, yeah, there is so much randomness in sampling that we should be very careful to assign things. I would refer you to the books and CDs I created on these issues. First of all, there is the Excel 2013 for Scientists book. An older version is 2007 for Scientists. I also discussed this issue briefly in my new book Excel Simulations because it's basically a simulation in this case. I simulated random values as if they were used in a sample. You can also go for my CDs, Excel for Scientists again, 2013 or 2007. The advantage of CDs is that they have more than 1500 slides and they are very interactive. So they ask you questions every once in a while that you get it and you can test yourself. You can search through the slides very easily. Sometimes that works better than a book. It depends on what kind of person you are. If you prefer books, go for the book. Where can you find all of this? Before we discuss that, let me show you first that they, all four of them, they have the same um, content. They discuss general spreadsheet techniques. They go into data analysis, including array formulas. How do you plot your data? including histograms, error bars, interpolation, you name it, anything that you need in science. Then we go into curve fitting and regression analysis, including linear, nonlinear, sigmoidal and logistic, logistic curves. We go into multiple regression and correlation, statistical analysis, students t-test, chi-test, analysis of variance, how do you test for significance, how do you calculate margins of error. Outliers are discussed in part 4 and part 5. Where do you find all of this? You can find it at MrExcel.com, Amazon.com or the bookstore. Just look if you go on the internet for my name, Gerard Verschuren. When you type that in, you will find all the tools I developed for you. I wish you good luck.